Yeah, as it's much. It's my favorite leftover. Delicious. Little stuffing and turkey is, there's nothing better. So, uh, so we're actually, yeah, we're going to do a, a nice little variation on stuffing. I mean, there's so many different stuffings and people have um, their own recipe and their own preferences in terms of the ingredients um, they like to use. My mom likes to hide the stove top box because um, it's my sister's favorite. She just goes for the box version. But as with anything, you know, it contains some extra sodium, contains maybe not the best ingredients and flavors. So when you make your own, you can always really tailor it to your own liking and surprise people with some different ingredients. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do today. So what we're going to do is uh, we've chose apple as kind of like the key po component here. Um, again, you know, seasonal right now. They're, they're delicious. If you do get a chance to go apple picking, um, you know, I went with it as a kid and I just went again recently this past weekend. It was fantastic. I mean, the apples off of a tree uh, are in so much better than the apples you buy in a grocery store. So if you do get a chance, uh, I definitely suggest you go out there. So we're, we're using apple. Uh, we're also using... Uh, a little bit of squash um, and fennel as well. Instead of celery, I don't. I mean, this can be substituted for celery. I think fennel, and I always talk about fennel being uh, very similar to celery, but kind of like on flavor steroids. So it's a similar crunch, but the flavor is is incredible. Uh, you have this beautiful, almost licorice um, uh, taste, but not in like the bad licorice that everyone like hates. Yeah, when you say black licorice, I'm not a black licorice fan. I don't like that flavor, but fennel. It's very mild, it's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Give it a try if you have it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a little bit of onion, a little bit of red onion. And we're gonna wait till it's ready. Make, make sure it speaks to you. Have to it's gonna be hot enough. To I think we're good. So we're gonna, a little bit of diced red onion. Everyone can hear that? All right, so a little bit of onion in there, a little bit of garlic. I'm just throwing just big chunks of garlic in there. To like a little smaller, you can actually use the, the rasp or the microplane that I use for the, um, for the ginger. <clears throat> this is great for garlic as well. Use it as garlic and use just this really nice fine mince. And both with the ginger and the garlic, there are some very powerful cancer-fighting compounds within them. And the more you pulverize it, the more you grate it up, um, you're really exposing more of those essential compounds. Fennel is going to go right in. It takes a little bit longer. It's almost like celery. You want to break down. It's very fibrous. So you want to break that down a little bit. So that'll go right in at the beginning. Uh, your squash and your apples are going to go near the end because they don't take that much time to cook. Um, and we're going to bake it again. Once this is sauteed, we're going to throw it back in the oven. So leave those till a little later. And then for the, the substitute, we're not using, obviously, bread in this. Uh, so we're going to make... That would be too easy that to go for gluten-free bread. And it's very expensive, or it can be, depending where you go. So actually, I'll, I'll save that for the... So uh, polenta. We're using polenta today. Has anyone made polenta before? Yeah, some shakes, yes. So um, it's pretty much essentially cornmeal. Um, and a liquid. So you can use water, you can use vegetable stock. Um, I grew up on it. it is, it's kind of like a rustic, um, we call it in Italian, cucina povera, which is like a poor man's food pretty much because it was, it was meant to fill you up. It was meant to, uh, you know, sustain when you, you know, maybe you can go a month without eating meat. You would have polenta, which would, which would keep, you, uh, keep you full. So uh, it's still a delicious uh, dish and it's still used quite a bit. Sorry? It's corn. It's not a complete protein. Yeah. So it has some amino acids, the building blocks of protein. And during the same day, you have to have something that's complementary, whether it's beans, seeds, um, you know, legumes, pair together with that. Or if you're having turkey, yeah, you're fine. You're getting your protein there. So to cook it, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, Again, if you do have any other questions about how to cook, and I can show you. I just wanted to speed it up for today. But it's essentially um, bring three cups of water, three cups of stock to a boil. You slowly pour in one cup of <clears throat> excuse me, cornmeal, uh, the fine cornmeal. You can use the, the uh, grittier one as well. It's just going to take a little bit longer to cook. 
um, and then stir it. And this is the most important part. Reduce the heat and you have to stir and stir and stir, otherwise it'll clump up on you. Um, also watch for exploding pockets of polenta. It's not this, I don't want to scare dangerous. you. I don't want to scare you from cooking polenta. It is, it's very simple and it's a beautiful dish um, to make. So once you make your, your polenta, you're going to pour it out into a baking dish and let it cool and it'll harden up on you, kind of like this. So I actually put this in the fridge. And so we have almost like our, our polenta bread, I guess you can call it. And it's, it's pretty solid. And this is, you know, this you can have as is. You can put a little bit of tomato sauce on top. Um, we throw it on the barbecue sometimes. Uh, a lot of people now in restaurants are doing what's called polenta fries, like their version of uh, French fries. Uh, which are really nice, uh, but we're going to make almost like bread cubes out of it. So we just want to cut it. Lengthwise and then cut across and you have these, you know, these really nice croutons almost. You can tell by the beautiful yellow color of the cornmeal that corn, people don't think of it as being an antioxidant rich food, but it is. Uh, it's rich in carotenoids, which are a class of antioxidants that reduce overall inflammation in the body. And we know that inflammation is tied to many chronic diseases, so things like heart disease, you know, disease um, as well as cancer. So it's important to get as many carotenoids and a variety of plant chemicals. What I find really interesting about corn is, as we know, it's one of the staple grains of the world. So together with wheat and rice, corn is right up there. And so the Native American word for corn is maize, which translates to that which sustains life, which I think is very interesting. It's, it's such a staple in, in so many cultures. Um, and in, as far as the nutrition benefits, again, with the antioxidants, but it also, the type of fiber that's found in corn has been researched. And there's some studies suggesting that it's actually fermented by, or it acts as food for the healthy bacteria that's in the colon. Um, and so this bacteria breaks down the fiber that's in corn um, and converts it into short-chain fatty acids, which basically help the, the cells of the colon to thrive. And this has been shown to reduce risk of developing colon cancer. So corn for a healthy colon is very important. And as we were talking about with the garlic and the ginger, with cornmeal, they've shown that because it's, it's actually breaking down the corn itself, that those carotenoids and those antioxidants are actually more readily available. So your body gets more of it when you're using the cornmeal just like in polenta compared to actually eating the corn whole. The other cool thing about it is uh, the carotenoids are fat soluble. So you need a little bit of olive oil or some sort of source of fat when you're, when you're eating your corn in order to get you know, more of these, these carotenoids out of the food. So a good reason to put a little you know, heart healthy oil together with your, your corn or your corn bread. That's it. So apples at the end, uh, depending on how crunchy you like the apples, um, you know, don't cook them too much because they get soft pretty quick. And that's it. Then you're going to combine them. Combine everything with the polenta cubes in there. And we're going to finish it with a few dried cranberries. Do all. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's always a good sign. And I mean, it's, it's, it's different. It's not your traditional uh, Thanksgiving, but, you know, try it out this year. Maybe Surprise you get some takers. Surprise your family if you have your old standby recipes. It's always nice to spice it up a little bit. Something different. And again, you know, fresh sage in there, some rosemary. Customize it to your liking. And then you can do this ahead of time. Let it cool, put it in the fridge, you know, two days before, and then pop it in the oven, screaming hot, so about 400 degrees, and everything's cooked. So you really only need to caramelize the top and get a nice uh, crisp on it. Um, so about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just until it's nice and golden brown. And it kind of looks something like this. I put some pine nuts on it as well, but you're gonna get, you know, a really nice crispiness on the uh, the polenta squares um, and it's you know good to go as is delicious now if you were going to use this put this in here if you were going to use this to stuff your turkey because i know you know there's a, a bit of a controversy you know do we leave the stuffing aside 
or people from that... a food safety point of view. So your turkey, uh, poultry in general, we want it to reach a safe internal temperature. So you're going to use a thermometer, you're going to check, and make sure it's cooked fully through so that um, you're not getting any bacteria that could make you sick, especially if you're immune compromised. So going through cancer treatment, chemotherapy in, in particular, you want to make sure you're being you know, really extra careful with cooking things through. And when you're stuffing the turkey with the stuffing, then you're kind of mixing ingredients and it's more difficult for the inside of the turkey to cook thoroughly when you do that. So Jeremy has some tips. If you're going to stuff the turkey, what's the way to keep it? If you're going to stuff your turkey, yes. Yeah. So first, stuffing is obviously going to be very, very cool. You got to cool it completely. can't be warm at all. Uh, so refrigerate it until uh, it's you know, cold and then you can stuff it. Always leave a pocket of air. You don't want to stuff it completely where no air can circulate. So if you're going to put some in, put a little bit in, but make sure that you can, you know, not fit inside. But I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a little bit of space that, you, that air can circulate and, and uh, move all the way inside the turkey. Some people just, you know, pack, pack the whole it. thing up and then uh, you have, you know, you don't have air circulating inside and then you have a risk of not cooking it properly. So do that. Or um, what I like to do is I, I don't, I just leave it aside. Serve it separately, and then maybe I cut a few heads of garlic, a few oranges in half, some rosemary, and those are loose ingredients um, where air can move through properly, and then I'll, I'll put those in the turkey. And you'll instead. keep, if you have any vegetarians coming over, you'll keep them happy so they can enjoy the stuffing as well. Yes. So yeah, a bit safer to keep it separate, but um, make sure you get that air circulation.